Daisy Phillips. And I'm Scott Phillips. And today on the American Wood Shop, it's all about turning candlesticks, whether it's an elegant one like mine. Or the mega pedestal walnut candlesticks like mine. It's so much fun, so easy to do. Stay with us. Learn how to do it yourself on the American Wood Shop. The American Wood Shop with Scott Phillips is brought to you by Woodcraft since 1928 providing traditional and modern woodworking tools and supplies to generations of craftsmen. Woodcraft, helping you make wood work. Craig, from the first cut to the final assembly, providing woodworkers with products that help simplify woodworking challenges. Craig. Gorilla Glue, for the toughest jobs on planet Earth. For dry hands that crack and split. O'Keefe's Working Hands. Easy Wood Tools, American-made tools for all skill levels. Today it's all about spindle turning. And with my Colonial Candlestick, as you can see, it's two pieces. We'll turn them separately. One is the main part of the spindle, which we'll cut out of this. And the other one is basically just a drawn off round disc, because we don't want to waste the wood. So that's why we do it separately. Now here are the details. On the turning square, that's two and a quarter inches square, and I set up the bandsaw with a rip fence and cut it into a square. Then I can use a miter gauge and cut it to a 12 inch finish length. And then from there, the other piece of the candlestick is the base, and we have to cut a five and a half inch diameter circle out on a piece of wood that's one and an eighth inches thick. And once that's cut out, we can get to this point right here. And what this is with this square, we found the center point and marked it with white lines with this gauge. You don't need that, but it's a handy tool to have. You could just draw straight lines from corner to corner. But this is a very important thing. And explain why, Susie. It's especially important to have a metal or glass candle cup holder because you want something in between the candle and the wood. And to that end, I have a Forstner bit here that's just the right size for this brass cup. And right on center with this square, I'm going to drill that 15 16 inch diameter hole. And whatever you do, keep the drill square. Also, be sure to read, understand, and follow all the instructions that come with the tools and products you use in your wood shop. Work safely. Now, that should be home. Set it in there. Let's see. And you Maybe. tap it down just a hair deeper. Yep. Okay, so this is an important step. Go for it. Go. And now when that is hammered in there nice and tight. Perfect. And now's the time to do it. Yep. That gives us something <laughs> for the live ball bearing center, which is right here, to fit into securely, because it goes in there about three sixteenths of an inch. So we'll get this set up with the drive spur on the other end and that's been right on center. And that goes on this end of the headstock and right. we'll mount that get securely mount between centers and we're off to the races. Yeah, then the fun part begins. So let's take a look at this part of the candlestick. Grain's running this way, so it's mounted between the drive spur and the live ball bearing center. Cups on this end. Tool rest is locked so the cutting edge of the rougher is right on the center of this billet. The square edges are on there on the small workpiece. On bigger pieces, we knock those edges off. Now, let's see it happen at 810 RPM. All right. You ready? You bet. Okay. And you want to keep it flat to the tool rest and straight and hug it to your body. And then you just go in there and you rough off those edges. And what she does, she pinches her thumb and her finger to stop it from jamming into those voids of those square shoulders. So she works this so it's completely round. And whatever you do, whenever you move the tool rest, turn off the wood lathe, move the tool rest, secure it, and then finish your turning. And it's perfect. And that can just go straight in and move it and go straight in. And then I can go back and just go all the way across to kind of smooth what I've cut. Just like that. And just keep that firm pressure and keep it straight. And then right here it's kind of rough and I'm going to just go straight back in. 
and just knock those edges off and just keep working away on it. All right, that looks great. I think it's gun barrel straight as they say. That it is. And if you think this is cool, let me show you something really amazing. <laughs> Susie, I need more power. I'm giving her all she's got, Scotty. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now wow. let it coast to a stop, Susie. Now look at this. As far as I know, this is a world first. James C. Opica. Yes. Thank you. You designed and built this, and plans for this are on our website. And tell us what inspired you to build this. Well, five trips to Africa, I saw the need for employment, things that create jobs. And I thought, okay, we don't have a lot of money, but maybe we can find enough wood and build these bicycle lays. Bicycle powered lays? Powered lays, yes. Because Every they do have a lot of bicycles. Oh, yes, they do. But yes. they don't have electricity, they, they don't have gas. That's correct. And they don't have Susie. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now Susie, let's see how this works. Here's the flywheel, the inertia is saved of her pedaling. And then to detail it, I'm using a detailer here. And you can just keep that cutting edge right on center line. A little bit more RPM, please. Right. Okay, now the other thing I can do is use a smoother, which is just a round carbide cutter. And man, this goes to town. As long as you have a good power supply. Now, James, is it okay to share this plan on the internet for people? Yes, it is. I'd be happy to have somebody else make another one. Okay, well, now the other thing is, you are an honorary tribes member of the Maasai, right? Maasai people, yes. Please say to them what you want them to know. Their greatest need is that of having things that produce income. Okay. Things that they can make and sell. So the wood lathe is designed to make bowls that they could then sell yes. and use the money for sustenance, That's for correct. life. Yes. Well, the beauty of this is all the resources that they need yep. are available there, yes. and they can turn yes. with the Opica wood lathe <laughs> and a bicycle <laughs> and make things to sell. And yes. they can use that money for sustenance, yes. for water. Now, what do you think of my power source here? <laughs> it couldn't be any better. I'll tell you, it shows that you don't need a, a workhorse to, to power this lathe because the power is really here. All you have to do is keep that wheel going. Okay. And, and that's what uh, Susie was doing. She was just basically, once she got it going, it... it Slow and steady wins yeah. the day. Yeah, easy. Yes. Well, you are a powerful lady. Now, <laughs> God bless you for what you've done Thank here. You. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Yes, yes. And Susie, let's get back inside and finish that All candle right, stand. Alright, let's do it. Alright. That was fun. That was a great lathe. It truly was. Yeah. James Opeka, what a designer. Now look at this. This is how we duplicate on a wood lathe. And this is an affordable machine right here. F power at your fingertips, 1230 RPM setting now, which is faster because it's in a round form. But wherever there's a major transition, the bead is a bump, a cove is a cave, we've marked it with a pencil and tell them about the tool you're going to use. Well, I'll use a parting tool to start off with, and that way, where we mark the lines, I'll go in and part it, and that way, and that gives me my layout for the candlestick, and then I can just work away the rest of the wood. Talk's cheap. Let's see some action. Oh, <laughs> Come on. Tough on a girl. Let's go. <laughs> All righty. So you just hold it right to the tool rest, keep it level, and you don't rock it back and forth. This one you just go straight in, right there. And that's the, the edge tenon. of that line. Yep. That's it. And that's just a hair under an inch in diameter. Yep. Bigger than the drive spur. And then she comes up to this bead, which is a bump. Right. And that defines the depth. And you can use dial calipers to check that. But you just go by eye. Yep. And it's amazing how close you can duplicate by eye. Yeah. And then there's the top of this form at the top edge of the bead, and that's deep enough right, right there. And you never want to go in deep and pinch this blade between the two pieces of the wood. You yeah. just keep moving over and working it in. Okay. All right, so I've got those lines. I've got to move the tool rest, and then I can get these marked in, and it's on to using the detailer. There you go. All right, you ready? Go for it. All right. 
cutting edge of that carbide cutter is right at center line. Yep. That one. Man, it's like cutting into butter. It's walnut. It is walnut, yeah. Okay, now's the time for the detailer. And the detailer is a diamond shaped carbide cutter and I'm gonna go in and work on this cove and just work some of the material away and then also use the finisher. Ready? You bet. All right. Hey, and just keep it level, pinch it in here. And the chisel is always right flat in. to the tool rest, never rocked up to one side or the other. Why do you like that fine diamond point? Oh, I love it because you can get in there like that and just work the tool, work the material away. It's great. It has such a small cutting edge. It does. You that can really get in bind. there. Yep. And then I can go in on this side and work that away. Okay. So. And then I can step in with the finisher. Which is a round cutter, about yep. three eighths of an inch in diameter yeah, carbide. That's great. Okay. Again, the cutting edge is right at center line. Okay. okay. And some people say you can't shear with a scraping action. This is bone dry wood. Oh. And you're getting great shavings off of that. We even have some ribbons floating away off of that. Oh, and it's perfect for creating this gradual cove in here. It's going to really be beautiful. Two forms of turning. One's a cove, which is a cave cut. Oh, and one's a bead. Okay, yes, you're in good shape. Sorry about that. No interruptions, please. <laughs> Got power tools going. Okay. Look at those shavings. Yeah, I love that. Beautiful. All right. Well, that's the foot of the candlestick. And next, what you'll do is taper this area down and then work on the bead and then the shelf and then the cup. Yep, ready? Yep. Okay. Again, the speed is 1,230 RPM, but if your speed on your lathe is plus or minus 150 RPM, it'll still give you great cut. So universal turning speed I've found is 1200, as long as it's in round form, not rough. Okay, we'll take a little bit more of this off here. And then I'm gonna start working on the bead right here. I'm working that round. Taking it down. And then I'll take this down, cause this is all waste, this goes away. And once I get more of this on this side worked away, then I can work and get the side of that around that side. But I really need to get rid of all this material here first and just get in there. And if the going gets tight, she can go to the detailer. That's right, because it's going to get right in there and really work that Flat around. Flat to the tool rest it is. Yep. Just work that round. I love it because you can just go back and forth with that one. And you can see where it's really making that bead. Side to side. Then I can work that edge off there too. Get in there and get rid of that. These tools are awesome. Okay, get in there with the detailer. When it gets tight, that's really? a wonderful tool to yep. use, like in this area right in here. Absolutely. Or on the underside of that lip of the top of the cup to get that dripping wax. Yep. And when these carbide cutters get dull and they stay sharp a long time, you take a small Allen wrench, flip them around, you have a whole new edge again. So sharpening's not an issue. I'm gonna undercut that just a little bit. And then just round this over just a little bit here. That's looking good. Yeah, it really is. Don't want to take much more off there. So she just has to take this area down a bit, make this form more graceful, yep. and it's so on it. to sanding and finishing. Yeah. 
Susie, this is just spectacular. Thank you. Beautiful Thanks. brain on that. Yeah. Okay, now I'll set that down and carefully and pull this apart and it's on to making the base for this candlestick. Tell us about those steps. Well, making the base is pretty simple. You draw out a circle and you cut it out on the bandsaw and just make sure you follow the line. And then I want to drill in here to accept the tenon and it's 15 sixteenths in diameter and 5 eighths inch deep. So once I got that drilled, then I mounted a three inch face plate with four screws to keep that on securely. And then I'll just mount that onto the lathe and it's time to turn and sculpt the base. And once that's there. secure, she uses the finisher, 3 8 inch diameter carbide cutter, and she just rounds the outside edge running at 1,230 RPM. Remember, universal turning speed 1,200. And once that's turned down, then she has to sand a bit, finish a bit, and while she does that, on to turning the pedestal for the candle. I'm going to turn this beautiful candle pedestal and I want you to see all the pieces and how this all comes together. So the top is turned so that it accepts a glass container so it won't slip off. And that's two pieces of wood stacked together. The bottom is just a larger block of wood. And to cut those out, I just used the bandsaw to shape them up to get the best wood out of a beautiful piece of walnut. Let me show you the billet here. I'll set these pieces aside. And a turning blank like this is called a billet. It weighs around 15 pounds, so it's heavy. And the first thing I do is take it to a bandsaw and I carefully cut it square on each end to a 19 and a quarter inch finished length, square cut. And then what I use is a resaw fence with a half inch four tooth resaw blade on a bandsaw, heavy duty and I square that up and so I make two passes. One one dimension, keep the fence locked, rotate the workpiece 90 degrees, then I can square that up. So it truly becomes a turning square. And from there, what I do is I turn off the bandsaw, tilt the table and lock it in place at 45 degrees, readjust the resaw fence so that I can then carefully knock four corners off of that square. And I just take my time, hold it securely to the resaw fence, and then rotate it, cut all four corners off, and it will be perfectly balanced, a nice octagon. From there, you can see that I've attached a four inch face plate on the very bottom with eight screws. And that's because this is really heavy on the wood lathe. You can see this is for the live ball bearing center on the other end. And before we get to turning this, look over here. I have these two pieces of wood for the top that need to be glued together, grain running the same way. So I'm being very careful about that. You don't want the grain to explode apart as it would expand and contract cross grain. I'm using a very thick viscosity cyanoacrylate here. And I use an activator on the bigger of the two pieces, let that dry just a bit. And then I flip this over, counting all the time because it literally only has seconds to cure. Okay, that's perfect. These tools are great to have. And now once that's pressed in place, balanced left and right, I can clamp it together. And that'll be ready for our glue up and our turning later on. Now let's get this mounted on the wood lathe. Okay, there's a test drive right now, and this is a heavier duty wood lathe, but this is pushing it to the limit. Four inch face plate threaded onto the drive of the headstock, live ball bearing center malleted into the end here. Tool rest is adjusted so that the rougher and the roughing gouge can do their work. This is a roughing gouge, and you hold it like that, we shear the wood off. And this rougher right here, the cutting edge needs to be right at center line. And it's a scraping action, but boy, it takes the wood down beautifully. So we'll use these tools to form this up into a nice smooth cylinder. Make sure that tool rest is secure and take light cuts. I'm running right at 600 RPM right now. Face shield down. You ease it in. And it's a matter of taking light cuts, pinching the chisel so it doesn't jam into the void. 
And this is the traditional way to rough work pieces around. Some people go straight in, that's not the best way to use this tool. It's just like that. And oh, by the way, if you want to learn how to sharpen it, go to the American Woodshop website. Under resources, we have video clips in there on how to sharpen these, get the most out of your tools. So I'll take this right on down. That's smooth right there. Let's take a look at it. And that's the way you rough it. Whenever you do move the tool rest, make sure the workpiece is turned off. Now I'll go to the rougher right at center line and this is how it works your choice now make it round okay it's perfectly roughed round and what you can see i've made some white marks 10 and all and like susie showed us in duplicating wherever there's a major transition we have made a white line that I'll use a parting tool to go in and make a depth cut and then cutting edge right at center line and I can take the speed up just a hair now that it's better balanced and I go in and wherever there's a white line I open that cut up and that gives me the depth that I use the other chisels to go to and this is the best way to duplicate things. So once I get those all done, then I use the detailer and the smoother, the 3 8 inch diameter smoother, to create the various profiles. Okay, so on top of that bead is a nice little cove. We'll do this. You do not want that cove to get into a pinch. So open it up. You can go uphill, downhill, look at those ribbons. There's my cove, and if I want to make it tighter still, I can go to the detailer so I can go a bit deeper without getting into a bind. And you just work through all of these chisels, creating nice little shoulders like that. And if you want it to be a square shoulder, you can go right back to that parting tool like this right here to create square shoulders. Just make sure you keep the chisel secured to the tool rest. There is an undercut there and then a shoulder at the bottom. And then from there I can use the rougher to work this column right on down. Now that is fun. Now what a beautiful form. So from here, I'll remove the tool rest. I'll sand with good dust collection, dust mask on, and friction on a water-based polyurethane. And also, I use a screw chuck. And what I do is I mount those two glued up pieces of wood for the top onto that screw. And from there, I can use the hollowing tool, the smoother or finisher to just make gentle cuts to cup that out and I'll finish that as well a little bit of hand sanding and then on to assembly now there's the top with a dowel screw in it and right there you can see that this is perfectly designed to mate all the parts together you simply use the dowel screwdriver and carefully work it in until it bottoms out into the hole and now I can join everything together pilot holes in the column here those were pre-drilled so quarter inch holes we'll screw it together wipe the finish on and then it's over to Susie to see what she thinks looking good well here's how the big turning came out the pedestal candle stand and you can see the grain of this walnut well it's just majestic and that's the most important tip. Work with the wood grain, whatever you turn. Absolutely, it really comes alive. Even on my little colonial candlestick, it really just pops, it's beautiful. And make sure you don't leave any candles lit unattended. Use a glass or metal candle cup, so. Okay, safety first, always Absolutely. with this. But seriously, you need to try turning. 
and there are great places to go to take classes, get good at it. It'll be the most fun you'll ever have in the woodshop. Absolutely. Now next week on to Spirit Carving, so don't miss it. See you then. See ya. Woodcraft, since 1928, providing traditional and modern woodworking tools and supplies to generations of craftsmen. Woodcraft, helping you make wood work. Craig, from the first cut to the final assembly, providing woodworkers with products that help simplify woodworking challenges. Craig. Gorilla Glue, for the toughest jobs on planet Earth. For dry hands that crack and split. O'Keefe's Working Hands. Easy Wood Tools, American-made tools for all skill levels. For more information behind the scenes at the American Woodshop, go to our website for complete details on tips and like us on Facebook. Bonnie,